Today on Cyberwork Hacks, my guest is James Stanger of CompTIA. James is talking today about what CompTIA calls their tech trifecta of certifications. That's the A+, Network+, and Security+, Plus certification. How do these three certs interact? What domains do each cover? A+, Plus teaches things like tech support, right? Help desk, mm -hmm. right? Network+, yes. Plus, it really gets you into becoming somebody who understands networking at a professional level. And then Security Plus is basically the de facto standard for entering the cybersecurity professions. And why should you consider studying all three to get a leg up in the multitude of career paths? A lot of workers are coming, and even though they have a, a four-year degree or a two-year degree, or they have some sort of training, they don't have the kind of foundations. They will spend up to half of a new worker's time the first six months teaching them, hey, this is the TCP handshake. That's all today on today's episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The IT and cybersecurity job market is thriving. Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts 377,500 new IT jobs annually. You need skill and hustle to obtain, obtain these jobs, of course, but the good news is that cybersecurity professionals can look forward to extremely competitive salaries. That's why InfoSec has leveraged 20 years of industry experience, drawing from multiple sources to give you, cyberwork listeners, an analysis of the most popular and top-paying industry certifications. You can use it to navigate your way to a good-paying cybersecurity career. So to get your free copy of our Cybersecurity Salary Guide ebook, just click the link in the description below. It's right there near the top, just below me. You can't miss it. Click the link in the description and download our free Cybersecurity Salary Guide ebook. Your cybersecurity journey starts here. Now, let's get the show started. Welcome to a new episode of Cyberwork Hacks. The purpose of this spinoff of our popular Cyborg podcast is to take a single fundamental question and give you a quick, clear, and actionable solution and a new insight into how to utilize InfoSec products and training to achieve your work and career goals. So my guest today is James Stanger from CompTIA, uh, Computing Technology Industry Association. I don't ever get to use the uh, abbreviation in full very often, so here we are. I'm going to say it. Uh, James has joined on past episodes of both the main uh, feed and the hacks episodes. He discussed both the Data Plus certification and the cloud plus certification but today uh james and i are going to get down to brass tacks and i do mean brass tacks in the way that they're originally referred to the fasteners that keep the whole carpet down this is the foundational stuff here the brass tacks i'm speaking of county uh yeah. tech trifecta uh of certs and i'm talking about the a plus certification the network plus certification and the security plus certification and specifically about how acquiring all three can supercharge your employment prospects and diversify your career map so it's great to have you back on the show james thanks for joining me it's great to be here representing CompTIA. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Uh, uh, yeah, I like that analogy about the brass tacks, or at least, you know, getting a, a sure foundation. That's good yeah, for yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'd heard that that phrase of like, you know, uh, stripping the, you know, the, the floor to the tax or whatever. And I was like, oh, it's an interesting visual. But uh, uh, but yeah, so these are, this is like, this is the, uh, the foundational stuff. So I want to talk um, intimately about the three certs, the A+, the Network+, and the Security+. Uh, now, for those who are just starting and don't know, what aspects of IT and security do these certifications teach you and ready you for? What are their respective tech do domains? You know, the respective tech domains, and that's one way to look at A+, plus, Network+, plus, and Security+, plus, because uh, A+, plus will teach you what I would say are the end points. And by end points, I mean the computers that we use, whether mm -hmm. it be the webcam that we're, the cams that we're using right now, our mobile phones, mm -hmm. right, PCs. Yep. Routers, printers, printers. printers. Uh, yep. yeah, uh, let's go with Everything. printers with the mm -hmm. LAN first, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so printers, right? Um, and then let's go LAN, uh, let's go uh, WAN, right? So routers, mm -hmm. uh, switches, and then you start getting into servers. And uh, uh, we still use firewalls, intrusion, whatever endpoint you can think of, from MAC mm -hmm. address to storage, CPU. For example, these days we, we use the cloud. And that means that we will grab resources, whether it be storage or what they call compute, which is basically a whole bunch of CPU power, right? A plus right. teaches those elements. Network plus, how those things talk to each other, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be via uh, Ethernet, Bluetooth, satellite, what have you, right? Security plus then teaches you how you can and, and get the CIA triad going, uh, confidentiality, mm -hmm. integrity, availability. But it's much more than that. Now, you can also look at them in terms of a job role. A plus teaches things like tech support, right? Help desk, mm -hmm. right? Network yes. plus, 
it really gets you into becoming somebody who understands the business of networking, really getting, you know, at a professional level. Uh, and then Security Plus is basically, let's face it, it's the de facto standard for entering the cybersecurity profession. So you yeah. you can look at it in terms of a tech skill. You can look at it in terms of job role. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, well, great. Well, I want to spend today's hack talking specifically about that, about how these three certs link together yeah. to create a much larger kind of more job-ready skill set. So, uh, you know, I think it might be tempting for some newer students or professionals uh, you know, who to only choose what the one cert that pertains to their jo exact job prospects. Right. You know, if you're, if you're going to do security analysis, you get the security plus, uh, if you think you're going to be setting up networks, you get network plus, but can you talk about why it's important to sort of chain the information domains together as a set of foundations? That's really a good point. Adjacency is a real thing. Uh, mm -hmm. in other words, these are all sitting next to each other. You will start yes. with tech support. You can end up getting in networking into cybersecurity. That's one of the old classic pathways. Yeah. And and so adjacent job roles is really important. The other thing is you got to have the right foundation uh, to your point of uh, about getting to brass tacks or or you know having the right uh, start right. Um, mm -hmm. I was just last week in Nashville, Tennessee, and I was talking to people who are the CIOs and CISOs for organizations that are all hovering around a billion. Uh, that's with a B. So I guess I could do the uh, wow. dated reference here, but you know one billion dollars, right? Uh, you know, right. Whole you know, a billion dollars in revenue is, you know, significant. Yes. And every one of these people echoed what I've heard, whether it be in Thailand, Japan, the UK, Italy, uh, South Africa. A lot of workers are coming to them. And even though they have a, a four-year degree or a two-year degree or they have some sort of training, they don't have the kind of foundations. They will spend up to half of a new worker's time the first six months teaching them Hey, this is the TCP handshake or, mm -hmm. okay, here's, you know, you got to understand DNS and not just, oh yeah, it resolves, uh, you know, names to IP addresses, which by the way, uh, I ask techies that sometimes, and you'd be surprised how many people get it the opposite. And I realize DNS, there's DNS and reverse DNS. I get it. But my point is a lot of people don't have those foundations, About half sure. uh, of their workers will spend, um, up to 40%, up to half about will spend about half their time learning those foundations. And mm -hmm. our job at CompTIA is to eliminate that problem. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's, that's a, that's a best case scenario. Like a lot of times if you, you yeah. know, you come to it with your, your degree and they don't see your, uh, any ability to do hands on, they're like, well, I, I'm not going to spend six months, you know, upskilling this person or whatever, like uh, I'll find that, someone else who has know, mo mo moving up the resume yeah, pile or whatever. So, I mean, to that, to that end, I mean, can you talk about some of the ways that that having the A plus, net plus, sec plus can open up your job prospects? Are there certain types of job roles that are more attainable to these three certs in your tool belt rather than just getting a sec plus and jumping into the pool? That's right. I think, uh, first of all, you uh, help desk uh, tech support is something. Also, mm -hmm. entry-level cloud. Uh, you know, basically, yeah. okay. mm -hmm. you know, we can, uh, you know, do somebody that, that does user support uh, for cloud-based services. Uh, you also have people who can actually start uh, at the level of, okay, I understand the business need there. And now I understand enough about software as a service to maintain uh, the software as a service services for the healthcare industry. Healthcare industry uses SAAS a whole lot. Oh yeah. And so you can get in uh, and doing that. And after a period of time, then you can start to say, hey, I'm going to specialize into not just general technical support, but I'm going to specialize into something that really speaks to me. And mm -hmm. that, maybe that means you go into uh, programming, you know, development. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you go into cybersecurity. You know, there, there's so many different options, but the way I see it um, is that organizations are looking for somebody who has what I call the muscle memory for things like troubleshooting. You know, do you really, yeah. not just from a theoretical perspective, yes, but can you absolutely. really do it in a practical way? And that, that is the c common thing that I hear over and over again. Can this person, has this person been through an event where, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a, a server has gone down and we know how to fix it or ransomware has come in. Uh, I was just yeah. talking last week, somebody in Nashville, and she said, I don't want to hire somebody unless they, they really go through a ransomware event. And I said, simulated or real? She said, what's the difference? As long as they really know the steps about how yep. to respond. Yeah. And can really document them, I imagine, as well, right? I mean, because that's right. the thing that we talk about a lot is, is you know, one, the hands-on element. And I mean, uh, CompTIA has got some you know, very strong tools for that and InfoSec Skills does as well. But like, can you talk about uh, sort of how where hands-on experience comes into uh, this whole process as well? You bet. Um, 
they really are looking for people who are not just theor theoreticians. They need practical mm -hmm. people. Uh, I knew one person who, uh, he, he said the interview was not going well. But, you know, he's able to mm -hmm. answer questions like, what happens when you go to comptia.org? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, recursive DNFs and understanding that. And he said, they were all fine. The body language was, you know, okay. And they said, well, you know, what are some of your hobbies? And he's like, hmm. He goes, well, my favorite thing, because I uh, learned uh, CompTIA A+, uh, my favorite thing is to break into my uh, gaming console. I can't remember which one it was. And overclock the CPU. Yeah. That, that was his thing. And he's like, you know, I you know, didn't know if that was going to be a good answer. And he said, it was amazing to see the change in the room. Mm -hmm. Because people went from kind of, you know, this kind of thing, the body language, and they were sitting for going, no. What did you do now? Tell me about overclocking, right? Mm -hmm. Because his job was as a cloud provider. You know, he wasn't yeah. going to go and overclock Google CPUs. But yeah, he was being asked to if something was going wrong with yes. a particular cloud instance. Like, well, we need more compute in there, CPU, or we need uh, more memory, or we need some sort mm -hmm. of resource. Okay, this person might understand eventually. You know what it means to do a MAC address filtering. Or yeah. to implement DNS. So it's that sort of thing that was really important. And to understand yeah. the troubleshooting, uh, the, the actual troubleshooting life cycle, because there, there are steps. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've gone through some of the, the study manuals on all of those. And, and, and the actual sort of explanation of how you would troubleshoot things is a huge part of it. Like it's, you know, a, a good chunk of the exam I know is, is identify this thing, identify this thing, tell how this connects to this. But there's also a lot of like, all right, you need to sort of, uh, diagnose what's going on here and sort of show your homework. That's right. And, you know, in the exam and in the labs that you learn for the exam, uh, you're going to see specific scenarios come up and you're going to have to, to choose the right tool or take the right step. Yeah. For that. Now do you, um, so for, uh, you know, common wisdom, I think is to start foundationally and, and move up. I mean, we, we say them in the order we say them, you know, a plus it gives you the ins and outs of the computer, and then you move up to the macro of Net Plus, and then you zoom into Secure with Security Plus. Is that the path you recommend as well, or do you think it, it matters that much which order you, you do them in? That's a really good question. You have to enter where it makes sense for you. If you mm -hmm. are truly competent and confident mm -hmm. in understanding endpoints and things, no need to reinvent the wheel. You know what I mean? Yeah. You move mm -hmm. on. Um, I've seen people start with the networking side of things like that. Usually you start with A plus network plus security plus, but you have to enter where it makes sense for you. Makes sense. Yeah, I like that. So as we wrap up today, do you have any tips or advice for novice cybersecurity students and professionals who are kind of daunted by the idea of not just learning one set of certs, but now, but now three? You know, I think the main thing is um, set a, a good expectation for yourself. In other words, Find out what is interesting for you. You can go to various sites, including comptia.org or mm -hmm. cyberseek.org, and you mm -hmm. can actually start to drill down into, uh, you know, various pathways. You might decide, hey, I'm not a help desk person. I'm more of a data person, or right. I'm not a data person. I eventually want to get into cybersecurity, but I know, you know, where I can start. So there are options with understanding infrastructure. So go to comptia.org and check it out. You can actually take a look at and kind of identify and create your own persona and say, yeah. well, here's what interests me. Um, to me, IT is like guitars, right? So I, yes. I play yeah. guitar. And I've noticed that over the years, guitars kind of choose me. Like I'm a Telecaster player. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, yeah. You probably don't know what I'm talking about, but the, no, it's, it's the type of guitar, the Fender Telecaster. I'll start on all sorts of guitars, but I end up for some reason at the Telecaster. It's the same sort of thing when it comes to, uh, when it comes to IT there's going to be a niche that will choose you. You'll find yourself mm -hmm. going into software development all the time or data or yeah. cybersecurity. So, but get that foundation first. There's the, my yeah. And, and the more, more paths you can see into the, into the maze, I think the better is it's, you know, I, I know everyone wants to be a pen tester and everyone wants to be a red hat, you know, or a, a you know, red team or sure. whatever, but, yeah. and yeah. those are cool things as well. But, uh, you know, boy, there's a lot of other stuff that you could do. That's really interesting as well. I mean, you know, oh. the, I, I just talked with, uh, uh, David Lee, the identity Jedi, and he's, as excited about identity and access management as anyone I've ever seen talk about red team. What a you know? great, what a cool area. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. just one of, one of dozens of areas, yeah. really hundreds. I know, hope operational this, uh, technology. I mean, there's so much. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope uh, people who are listening are, are getting excited about the prospect of, uh, of, of looking in, in all directions and seeing what, what m matches up to them uh, best. But uh, until then, James Stanger, thank you so much for all of your insights today. I appreciate it. Cool. And then you go.
Uh, and thank you all for watching Cyborg Hacks. If you enjoyed this video and felt it helped you, tell someone about it. A friend, a colleague, social media connections, anyone you like. Word of mouth is the real way to make a community like this grow. And if you haven't, please subscribe to our podcast feed and our YouTube page. You can go to infosecinstitute.com slash podcast for the full list, or just type Cyborg Infosec into your preferred search engine. You'll see us. Uh, and sign up for notifications and auto-download of episodes because Cyborg Hacks is coming out every other Thursday with bite-sized answers to your questions. Until next time, keep learning, keep developing your skills, and have fun with it. Bye for now.